Hello everybody, it's taken me three months to get to this point. Chapter 2, Part 2. Now, hopefully, it will not take me another three months before I get to Chapter 3. As before, I'm just going to show each page for five seconds first. And once it's done, I will read it aloud. Anyone who wants to stick around, let me know. Wait. Why would you let me know? Anyone who wants to stick around to listen to me speak or read what I wrote, the translation of the book, feel free to do so. I'm doing this primarily for myself because I like to listen to my own presentations as I take my long walks because I like to reflect on all this information and commit it to memory. On page 165 we start seeing uh, pictures that are addressed in the book. Here they are. In the prior pages, you see where the references are from. Perhaps these examples still exist in some world museums today, and Perhaps there's even better pictures or videos. That is something I will try to figure out in my analysis of chapter 2. you're wondering what took me so long to get to this point, well, I've read this book, I've read Jetica by Jordanus, I've read About the Barbarian Origins by Nicolo Zeno, Many, many references to all creation or Genesis stories and different variations of the flood. And if you really pay attention, even these stories that are attributed to aliens or ancient aliens relate to the same material I speak of. The one thing I have figured out is the Pelagians were pre pre great flood. And then after the Great Flood, there were two sides that sprang out, the yin, the yin and the yang, the black and the white, the good and the bad, the humanoid with elongated skulls, and the non-humanoid that were more human, animal, hybrids. For example, the Minotaur of Crete is a humanoid mix of a human genetic material and bull material. As I've mentioned before, the bull, the sacred bull, plays a lot of significance in certain religions, even to this day. 
even to this day. There's just so much to talk about. Let's just stick with this chapter for now. I will have to literally analyze each chapter only with the content presented inside of it. And then in the analysis, combined with all the other chapters that I have presented already, but not with the material that will follow afterwards. This is a multi-year project for me. I am leaving to Romania in hopefully in September, but I'm not sure. And I will be starting my adventures in the Carpathian Mountains, starting with the Buceji Mountains, where the Romanian Sphinx, also known as Omul, is, which I believe is the petrified head of Saturn or L, as Genesis calls him. There are other monuments around the area, other petrified heads, if you will. One of them is called Decebal, who is supposedly the last ruler of Dacia that will be talked about greatly in the future. But um, I'm looking for Mithra, and I don't know if Dechabal and Mithra are the same one to be seen. Hopefully, I will be able to do things similar to what Brian Forrester has done. If you've seen his latest videos, he speaks greatly of elongated skulls from Paracas, which is in Peru, and how DNA testing suggests that they're related to genetic populations of people from modern day Black Sea. Well, one thing you will notice especially my analysis, is that the Pelasgians as a whole, and later on the bloodline of Arimanius, or Mithra, or Prometheus, do have elongated skulls. So how did they end up in the Paracas? But the point is, if you read the other books I mentioned, the Jetica and about the origins of the barbarians, you will realize the Jetai or the Jeti, who later became the Goths, or essentially the bloodline that ruled the area north of the Danube in Europe for a long time, and even some areas south of the Danube. They are the bloodline that we see in the Paracas. So in essence, if I'm able to find monuments and uh, megaliths or tumulus inscriptions, writings, metallurgy, pottery, if I'm able to find any of these things, perhaps I can get closer to the truth about the origins of everything, and perhaps I can find the key that I've been looking for all along, which is 100% DNA activation, as I feel that is the only way to combat 
the 5G grid, smart grid agenda that's taking place all over the world, that's turning us all into better robots with less free will, with less creativity, less free thought. That is why I'm doing all of this. I can't say that I've been passionate about history most of my life, but I am definitely passionate now in understanding how we came to be the way that we are. Our world is dying. It's dying in the sense that anything that we may take for granted or think we have the freedom to decide, all that illusion will go out the window. Pretty soon there will be no nature, no blue skies, no freedom of self-expression. And ultimately that's all I care about, or myself. The ability to freely, creatively express myself. So even things such as these YouTube videos, they won't exist no more. Everything will be regulated. <clears throat> One of my favorite shows to watch on TV is Catfish on MTV. Because when I was younger, I was in a similar position myself. And... uh I like to hear other people's stories, the psychology, the men mentality that drives people to do what they do, be who they are. And, well, I don't know if you know this or not, but there is a lot of MK Ultra programming in that show where a lot of scenarios are created by agencies such as Mossad to brainwash us all into accepting certain ideologies don't get me wrong i love the hosts i don't know how much they know about all this but they are literally tools to spread agendas in how we should think and this is visible in many shows all over tv all over the world anywho look at all those swastikas huh it's time for me to read. That was it. If you want to read for yourself, you can end this video. If you want to listen to me read, here I go. Page 161. A considerable amount of stone weapons and instruments, just like objects fabricated out of animal bones and horns, are found spread out through all the regions of of all Dacia. In some of the Neolithic stations over the Carpathians, the archaeologist Romer tells us there are found thousands of chipped pieces, like flint, obsidian, etc., only in an area of four square meters, and likewise hundreds and thousands of different fabricated pieces made out of deer horns and animal bones. The source is Movement Archaeologique, page 9. Also, Discourse Congress Internationale d'Anthropologie à Budapest, 1876, page 10. With distinction, the Neolithic industry of stone instruments appears greatly evolved in Transylvania and the northern parts of Hungary. At the Prehistorical Congress in Paris, the same archaeologist Roma writes, I was the first who presented an obsidian nucleus of provenance or origins from Transylvania. Until then, keep in mind, when this book was written, a lot of what we consider Hungary today, I mean, a lot of what is said as being Hungary then is Transylvania today. Just so you understand. Transylvania, part of Romania. 
Until then, the whole world believed that the obsidian was imported into Europe from Mexico because only a few specimens were known and brought from there and some from Italy. The entire county Solnok Dobaka, writes another archaeologist from over the Carpathians, is planted and quite often with prehistoric antiquities from the Neolithic Epoch and the Bronze Epoch. And then the ref reference Archaeologiae at the Cito UJ Folly. The same can be said about the other counties of Transylvania and northern Hungary. To be seen Goose in his book, Aiden in his book, Hampel in his book. Now when I say books, it could be just speeches or articles. Page 162. In regards to Romania, Caesar Boliak writes, At us, in Romania, there are found more stone objects than bronze ones, and in the Dacian localities, understand before the Romans, or to elaborate, bronze objects are found rarely in comparison with stone objects. Then the references some magazine from the year 1870. Anyways, in regards to the prehistoric station Vadastra from Romanats County, Caesar Boliak writes, What would Lubbock say when he would find out that in two days with a few people, in a circular perimeter on whose surface there was nothing to hide the hidden deposits, there was pulled out from a depth of one meter to one meter and a half over 3,000 flint arrows, knives, cutters, parenthesis, hatches, celtics, close parenthesis, axes, hammers with holes, flint rounded slingshot stones, stones to sink bags, possibly fishnets, pens, etc. Multiple stones to grind seeds, multiple sandstones to sharpen stone. Machi, which I'm not sure what it is, it might be a storage container, out of which there was pulled chips of arrows, knives, etc. More than 300 objects of kneaded clay, about 300 objects of bone works, out of which about 70 pulled whole pens. Alls, andrele, which are specific needles to knit with, one needle with a pinhead, different sharpened horns, especially of deer, horns and bones of an animal much greater than the actual buffalo, widespread in all parts of the island. I believe, as I have already stated, it is bos urus, nothing of metal. Flint saws with well-pronounced teeth, of which we found once, about 16 in one spot. Offhand, I make a conjecture. Isn't it possible that in those times, so ancient in time, there was specialties with professional masters? Vadastra, which is a location, until today remains for me the locality which contains the most primitive prehistoric objects, in other words, from the epoch of polished stone. And this is from a book called Analele. I'm not sure afterwards. This industry of Neolithic man in Dacia is presented to us in great part indigenous. Almost all the materials out of which the weapons are fabricated and the stone instrument, instruments which were found on the territory of Dacia is presented to us as having an autochthonous, or came from the local end, character. This material of flint, serpentine, amphiboly, obsidian, tuftetrakit, which might mean trachyte, Possibly marl, possibly hone, possibly quartz schist, possibly shale, possibly jasper, possibly porphyritic, 
rock, possibly calcite spar, possibly bloodstone, possibly mottled or red colored limestone, possibly gabbro, etc. is extracted from the nearest cliffs of the Carpathians. We could say the following, that we are standing in front of the first mines in Dacia. Even without having in view the discoveries that will be made in the future, we can, based on archaeological documents that we possess up to today, establish that the following positive facts specifically. The cutting of stone in Dacia, and this judging based on an archaeological collection from the museums over the Carpathians, was blossoming in the Neolithic Epoch, specifically that the the cutting of stone in the Dacian regions had an expansion far more widespread and progressed than is presented in the same time period in the regions of Austria, Germany, France, and Italy. Specifically, we find in the Dacian countries represented both halves of the Neolithic epoch, the beginning of this era, which is characterized through the chisels with a flathead, through weapons and instruments not yet polished or perforated, and the second half of this epoch, or the one that followed, which is manifested through polished weapons and instruments, drilled with various forms and perfected. Likewise, judging on the enormous quantity and after geographical, geographical distribution of these objects, their results with full certitude that in the Neolithic epoch there lived in the Dacian regions a great and laborious population, widespread on all the plains, valleys, hills, even up to the ridges of the tallest mountains. Page 163. Anyways, different centers of Neolithic fabrication which were found in specific areas of Dacia, starting with the Danube and up to the springs of the Tissae or Tiza, serve as probes that the fabrication of stone and bone weapons and instruments in this epoch was not individual, that in our countries started industrial manufacturing and the material traffic of these fabrications, traffic which reached far beyond the borders of this country. In Bukovina, the most notable Neolithic station is the river Siret. Likewise, there have been found different Neolithic objects in the Bukovina localities named Zamchesh, Suchava, Chudin, Chernauts, Lujan, Jordanesht, Jaslovet, Kotiman, Onuf, Dubawuts, Sipanits, Dimka, at Halb at Halbwaka, Kuchurmare, Kotika, Chirli Baba, Zviniata, and Badin. And this is according to author Kaindo in his book. Here we reproduce different types of characteristics of the stone industry of this epoch in Dacia, likewise, some similar specimens from Western Europe and the lands of Troya or Troy. The provenance or origins of these artifacts. Figure 13, Flint Hatchet, Romania. I'm not going to read the reference, I'm just going to read what they are. And I suppose I should present at the same time. 163, 163. All right, 165 is where they start showing the pictures, but 163 is where they start giving descriptions. So, 13 is Flint Hatchet, Romania. 14 is Unperforated Axe of Green Serpentine, Romania, Zidina Dachlor or Godaniel Commune near Topolnica. Can zoom out. Fifteen 
15 is 15 and 16 on perforated picks, one of granite, the other serpentine, Romania, Vlaska County, found in a place with fragments of primitive pottery. 15 and 16. 17 and 18. On perforated granite axes, front and side views. Romania, Badastra. 16 and 17. 17 and 18 so these two 19 would be flint arrow with teeth Romania was found in the sands between Craiova and Calafat Twenty, granite axe Romania Punia Mare. Twenty one perforated stone eggs, Romania, Cetata Latinilor, near Oravica village, Mehedins County. Figures 22 and 23. A diorite axe hammer, front and side views. Figures 24 and 25. Perforated axe worked in whetstones, front and side views. Romanian. Twenty six and twenty seven elegant axe front and side views Romania found on the lap of the mountain Peschera Kualele Dumbovica County. This this location Peschera Kualele, huh, which means the cave of pottery is what was the inspiration for the Pelagian Origins video. Caves. Peschera, caves. Peste, or Pesce in Latin, fish. Anyways. Figure 28. Elegantly worked axe hammer, Romania, Cetata Dacilor. Twenty nine serpentine axe with two rows of teeth, Transylvania, Bistrica. Figures thirty to thirty three, Romania, the Museum, Museum of Tergul, Tergul Gioli. I am I will want to visit as many museums as possible, as many churches or cathedrals as possible. There should be a lot of illustrations, especially with elongated skulls that no one ever talks about. I hope I will talk about them, but I have to find them first. Figure 34, Serpentine Small Axe, Transylvania, Netus Commune, the collection of the Sigishwara Gymnasium. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a hundred years later such collections will not be in a gymnasium. <laughs> Figure... 35. Serpentine instrument for polishing, Transylvania. Turnul Roshu, or Red Tower. Again, Sigishwara Gymnasium. 
36. Serpentine Pickaxe, Transylvania. Same museum. Thirty seven small serpentine hammer axe, same gym Sigishwara gymnasium. Come on, thirty eight trachyte axe with sharpened tip, unfinished. Same gymnasium. 39 and 40. Perforated axe fragment front and side views. Transylvania, Hunedara, Hunedwara County, Krachunesh Commune, Barlog Cave. Forty one Amphiboly Hammer Fragment, Transylvania, Kretchenesh Commune, Barlaw Cave. Forty two, same thing. Forty three Stone Axe, Transylvania. Some cave in Joagio de Jos Com. Forty three, yeah. Forty four, Stone Axe, Hungary, Yaurin Commune. Again, that might be Transylvania today, not sure. Forty five. Big stone axe from the Munchell mountain top, Ardeo Commune, Transylvania. 46. Stone axe, Hungary, Yaorin Commune. 47. Jasper triangular tablet or amulet. The cave from Godinesh, Transylvania. So that's an amulet. Interesting. 48. Flint slingshot ball. Romania, Vadastra. Interesting. 49. Flint axe or Hacha, whatever that means. France. 50. Amphiboly hammer with the start of perforation. France. 51. Stone hammer. France. From Morbihan. 52. Flint Pickaxe, France. 53. Navi. Oh, yeah. Navi form. I don't know what material that is. Question mark. Pickaxe, France. 54. Flint axe from the ruins of the first city at Hisarlik, Troy. In case you didn't know, there was like four cities at Troy. One, two, three, and four. They go in succession from oldest to youngest. And the pottery, metallurgy, stonework, bonework is different from city to city. 55. <clears throat> Black diorite axe from the ruins of the first city at Hisarlik, Troy. 
Hopefully in my analysis video I can have some colored pictures of these same specimens. 56. Acts from the ruins of the first city at Hisserlik, Troy. Fifty seven Green Gabro hammer with the start of perforations from the ruins of the second city from Hisarlik or Troy. Should be this one, the left one. Fifty eight Axe for fighting made out of darkened diorite from the first city at Hisarlik. This one in the middle. 59. Hammer from Northern Greece. 50. Okay. So that's the first section that has pictures. There's the second section. Let's read the prelude first. Page 173. Prehistoric Pottery of Dacia. The Neolithic Epoch pottery is characterized through two distinct classes. The first class is formed by the older Neolithic pottery. In these initial Neolithic times, Ceramics in general is rough, impure clay, mixed with grains of quartz and sand, and the vases badly burned. Usually they are only on the surface reddened by fire, and the rest is gray, black, or yellowish gray. The form of the vases from these primitive times of the Neolithic epoch is more spherical or semi-spherical. They don't have a base or flat end, and the lower part is gourd, or in the shape of an egg. Likewise, the vases of this class are without handles, and have only a kind of drilled ears for hanging purposes. In this class of the Neolithic ceramics, there is presented the beginnings of some ornamental work. The decorations are formed from straight lines or sequential dots executing a less regulated way and everywhere only with fingernails or fingers. The second class of Neolithic ceramics is generally characterized by finer material and better fragmented. The fabrication of pottery is presented to us more symmetrical in form, a more advanced technique, and everywhere a variety of types. Anyways, the ornamental work of this class is much more regulated. The decorations are composed more of geometric shapes formed out of straight lines, later on curved lines, and executed with style or with other special instruments. A lot of spelling mistakes. Everywhere still, the entire pottery of the Neolithic epoch is worked by hand without the help of a wheel or a mechanical process. In regards to the prehistoric ceramics of Romania, Caesar Boliak writes the following. In what is had prior to the age of metals, we too have pottery, where there are no traces of any metal, pottery is rough, badly fragmented, made only by hand and poorly cooked, maybe even only dried by the sun alone, all the ornamental work on the primitive pottery is made by the finger or fingernail. If I would take different pottery, what I gather just from the edges of the Shiret up to Hatseg in Gredishta or Sarmisajatuza, Without doubt, it would make a quite varied collection and heterogeneous with imprints and different types and grades of culture, starting with the most primitive, the Neolithic, from Vadastra up to the most perfect, just before Roman times, from Zimcha and then up to the most perfect Daco Roman, from Severin and Rechica, where 
Samika pottery is abundant, decorated with figures and paintings and engraved from uh, his academical societal annals and then the page number. Even in the beginnings of the Bronze Epoch, the Dacian ceramics and the parts over the Carpathians arrived at a certain grade of perfection. The fabrication of pottery from these times is distinguished by a remarkable elongation of forms through a diversity of original types and finally through a simple style, beautiful yet traditional, of ornamentation. Everywhere we find a period of good material state and of a progressed civilization. The pottery from this epoch in Dacia, or figure 66 to 79, marks the beginning of having a luxurious character. It surpassed the limitations of a simple profession and reveals to us the beginnings of an art form full of avent. I don't know what that means. An art form still. Why so many mistakes in spelling? Still, that was unable to reach its greatest heights. We see it suddenly stopped, just like a big economic and social perturbation spread out over the land of Dacia, and at the same time ended the further evolution of these blossoming artistic fabrications north of the Danube. In his own prehistoric ceramics, archaeological studies from Dacia, Boliak presents as evidence the similarity, or better stated, the great affinity between Dacian pottery, or pre-Roman, page 174, and Western pottery, or Gallic, parenthesis. Just like there exists a great affinity between the Gallo-Romani history and the Daco Roman history, says Boliak. Similarly, there exists a great affinity between the Gallic pottery and Dacian pottery, prehistorical especially. Close parenthesis, his book. Figure 60, picture and description, Neolithic vase with rounded bottom, Romania. Uh, figure 61, Neolithic vase from Badastra and Romain. All right, let's go to this. Sixty two is figure sixty two is a Neolithic vase with a rounded bottom from Pyrenees. Figure sixty three is a Neolithic vase source. I'm assuming also from France. The other text on page 174 is still the geographic zone of ceramics which bears the Dacian character is much more extended. The Dacian ceramics as much from the Sorry, let me repeat that. Still the geographic zone of ceramics which bears the Dacian character is much more extended. The Dacian ceramics, as much from the Neolithic epoch, just like the Bronze Epoch, presents us from an artistic point of view and an ethnic character, the same typical forms and the same system of ornamentation 
just like the clay vases of the Balkanic Peninsula, and from the Archipelago Islands, just like the Austrian ceramics, Central and Southern Germany, from Hanovera, France, Belgium, Britain, the Alps, the Pyrenees, the Apennine Mountains, Portugal, and Sicily. This is according to Kartal Hack, La France Prehistorique. Also, the archaeologist Ertesito. Page 175. Likewise, there exists a homogeneity of types and ornamentation between Dacian fabricated ceramics and those of Troy, or Troy, according to Verkau S. Verkau and Schliemann. And then there is a French quote and the source. Or stating in other words, the entire ceramics of the Neolithic Epoch and the Bronze Epoch is congeners or the same. It bears the character of an unity of the same cultures and the same ethnic gene. And then there's figure 64. <coughs> It's a clay urn from the cemetery at Novak, Nitra County. That was Hungary a hundred years ago, I don't know now. And then figure 65, it's a clay vase from a crypt in the Alps. Let's see. So yeah, very similar to previous ones a distinct importance for the ethnic character of the primitive European civilization is the comparative study of the industrial ornamentation of the ceramic objects of bronze and even on the ancient Mycenic architecture. Different motifs of these ornamentations, starting with the edges of the eastern side of Asia Minor all the way to the Britannic Islands, present us the same unity of spirit, the same common origin. The entire system of these ornamentations is Pelasg. And this style of decorations we find even today represented almost in its entire form in homewares on the fabrics and seams used in particular of the Romanian people. And then parenthesis, some source. The southern Slavic ornamental origins is likewise Romanic or Latin derived, according to Professor D.R.I. Kersenshavi in his book. Oftentimes, through the form of ornamentals, we are presented on ceramic and bronze objects specific symbolic signs which have at their base somewhat pre ancient religious representations like the circle or the solar disk the sign of the cross, the figure of an X, triangles and the mysterious sign yet favorable of the swastika, the symbol of the supreme divinity of the Pelasgians, of Jupiter Tonans, representing lightning or light everywhere, life, health and fortune, a sign which has been kept until today in the seams of the Romanian women from Transylvania. This last sign, or the swastika, is totally unknown to Assyria, Phoenicia, Egypt. It passed this way from Europe to Asia Minor, according to Schliemann. Page 176. <clears throat> As a conclusion, and at the same time straight documents about these reflections, we reproduce here different ceramic specimens of ancient Dacia, Likewise, some British and Mycenic ceramic similar specimens. Finally, we have also 
brought some probes from the ancient ornamental style as is presented to us on the objects made of ceramics, bronze, gold and on different Mycenic architecture. And then the provenance of the figures. 66 and 67. <clears throat> Jewa Jewa Jewel de Jos Supatra Kayu Figure sixty eight Solnok County. Sixty nine Beckes County seventy Transylvania Moigrad seventy one seventy three seventy four seventy five seventy six Bihor County so seventy one, seventy three, seventy four, and seventy five. Oh, and seventy six, seventy two. Dobrizinu lui land. <laughs> Pretty sure that's somewhere in Transylvania, but I'm not sure. 72 77 and 78 Zabolzi County This one is so trippy Looks like a face on 77 ah. 79 Tall Urn of 67 centimeters Romania or I think it's Romania yeah if you notice there's a figure here of a man riding a horse with a bow and arrow in his hands figures 80 and 81 vases from English tumulus English tumulus. Hmm. Yeah, similar. 82. From the ruins at Troy. 83 from the necropolis at Yalisos on Rhodes Island. Interesting. 84 Cyprus Island. 85 to 1. Figures 85 to 119, 122, and 123. Different ornamental specimens from the prehistoric antiquities of Dacia, Greece, and Troy. If you recall, uh, when I did the table of contents, I presented the uh, The Hyperborean uh, thesaurus, the Hyperborean thesaurus. On one of the specific <clears throat> gold pieces, you saw this wavy pattern, like in figure 87, or actually even 93. Very similar.
As you can see, learning this book means becoming a master of everything, including archaeology, pottery, art, or prehistoric art. There's just so much to it. So up to one number, to 119. One twenty four ornament on the gold fibula or brooch from the Vatican Museum. Provenance probably from Dacia, according to the Mortelet. Figure one twenty four. So I'm pretty sure this should still exist. I haven't looked, but I'll try to find it. One twenty four right here. One twenty-five ornament with swastika and other linear figures on a clay vase from Hungary. Keep in mind, Hungary could mean Romania today. Now you want a check mark or a V, minus sign, up arrow. Interest, like a sideways N. Interest. Figure 128, clay disc badly burned, Hungary, Baratagi cave. Has a swastika on it. Figure 130, terracotta bubble, Troy. I'm assuming 129 is related to 128. Because so that's also a swastika. Anyways, 131. Ceramic fragment from a series of tumulus which also contain prehistoric objects. Hungary, according to Romer. See the, see the X's? This X's, which is the evolution of the swastika, I believe. Or the other way around, who knows. Figure 133. The swastika sign on the seams of the clothing of the Romanian country ladies from the Apushen Mountains in Transylvania. Yeah, when I presented the Pelagian deity Jupiter Tonans, I, I talked about this briefly. These designs are still common in today's clothing, folklore clothing. But I won't know for sure until I go there. So this chapter was from pages 161 to 186. A lot of these pages were shown the artwork. Some pages were blank. And about 10 pages worth of text included. That concludes the presentation of Ancient Dacia, Chapter 2, Part 2, the additional notes. And next we'll follow a Chapter 2 analysis of Parts 1 and 2, the migration plus 
the artwork presented here.